Hello, everyone. I'm Christina Bauer. I'm chairing this session on fairness and privacy. And we have six talks in this. We have six talks in the session with two, two uh, remote and four persons on site. So I'm really happy um, that we have so many people on site. I'm looking forward to all presentations. And we start right away with a remote presentation. Uh, Jinning Wong uh, will present uh, the paper Imbalanced Data Sparsity as Source of Unfair Bias in Collaborative, collaborative Filtering. Can we have a connection, hopefully? Yes. Awesome. Hi, hi everyone. So my name is Chin Lin. Um, I am a data scientist at SEEK, and I'm representing my colleagues at SEEK AIPS's Recommendations and Responsible AI Squads to talk about imbalanced data sparsity as a source of unfair bias in collaborative filtering. So, so we're starting with like why be responsible by intent. Um, so let's start with an incident that occurred like one ordinary Wednesday morning a couple years ago. So we're all at work, you know, um, doing our own thing when breaking news occurs. Our website Seek, um, which is an online job recruitment marketplace, um, it had been named in the newspapers as a company that uses AI that favors men over women in the employment marketplace. So that caused an uproar, as you can imagine. But um, luckily for us, subsequent investigations indicated that the researchers had uploaded a resume for the male candidate, but a cover letter for the female candidate. So like the difference in the information of the candidate caused the difference in the treatment that each candidate got. So our algorithms were not to blame. Um, our algorithms were not biased in the way it was being accused of. Um, and since we do not use PII data such as gender in our algorithms, it is a relief to know that our algorithms do not bias against one gender or another. And it's a relief not only in the professional sense, but also in the personal sense, right? So as a woman myself, I would prefer if the AI algorithms in my daily life do not bias treatment against me. And I'm sure this is something we would not want happen to our friends, to our family, or to the people in our lives. Um, and as such, as a member of the AI community, we should take care to implement AI algorithms that are fair, because that's the right thing to do. So this aligns to SEEK's purpose and approach as well. SEEK is headquartered in Melbourne, Australia. It is a market leader in online employment marketplaces operating across countries in the Asia Pacific and Latin American regions. So SIG's purpose is to help people live more productive and fulfilling working lives and to help organizations succeed. Um, and as such, SIG takes pride in implementing responsible AI algorithms that helps diverse groups of people in diverse markets. Um, but this incident also highlights the business risks of having AI systems that are unfair or untrustworthy. Um, as the incident I described showed, there are reputational risks that are involved that may damage the company brand. There are also compliance risks. Um, we may inadvertently breach regulations or create unlawful systems. Model risk is also a significant factor. Um, an AI system that cannot be trusted also runs the risk of the model not performing as expected. So this may lead to potential monetary losses from suboptimal or inappropriate decisions. We could also be limiting the potential benefits of an innovative solution um, or be potentially be failing to meet our contractual obligations. Um, finally, it is important to realize that these risks arise unintentionally. So we don't necessarily intentionally set out to discriminate against a group but the risk is that um, these discriminatory practices can just crop up. For example, take the employment marketplace, which is sixth domain. Um, so there has, in the labor market, there has long been historical biases in certain, uh, against certain groups in certain industries. So if we do not intentionally design our systems responsibly, it may be that these biases can come true in the data. And as such, the AI systems can be inadvertently biased or facilitate discriminatory behavior. And as such, it is our responsibility to intentionally identify potential biases and design systems that are responsible and fair. So in the next part of the talk, um, I want to talk through a potential source of unfair bias that can emerge from um, collaborative filtering as a result of data sparsity. 
So we start with collaborative filtering algorithms, right? So in collaborative filtering, um, we leverage the idea that users with similar past preferences um, exhibit similar future preferences. Um, in order to find similar users, we rely on understanding user behavior. So users who like similar items are classified as similar users. Um, in collaborative filtering, as in most AI algos, um, we know that the more data we have, the better the recommendations we get. But this also means the higher the data sparsity, the worse the recommendation quality. Differences in the volumes of signals from different groups of people can lead to an imbalance of data sparsity between the groups. And this may in turn lead to an imbalance of the recommendation quality to these different groups. So this inadvertently biases the treatment of different groups. So in the recruitment domain, which is our domain, um, our users are candidates or job applicants. These are people looking for jobs. And our items for interest to these candidates are job ads on our website. Um, so the signal of interest is when the candidate applies to a job. So that's an application. So we've used three months of like candidate interactions to build a simulation to try and understand how data sparsity can affect the performance of recommendations in a collaborative filtering algorithm. Um, the chart on the right shows the number of applications each candidate has made on the x-axis. Um, and on the y-axis, we have the average um, precision of the recommendations for each candidate. So in this chart, you can see that the applicants with higher number of applications have higher precision and better recommendations. Um, candidates with more data sparsity or less applications will have worse recommendations. So this is data sparsity on an individual level, right? But is there data sparsity at a group level? So there has been studies that indicate that men and women behave differently in the job marketplace. For instance, um, women are found to apply to fewer jobs than men. So in the simulation data set we have, we do find that this is true for some roles. For example, in accounting, um, the chart on the right shows the difference between the average number of applications made individually by men versus the average number of applications made by women. So we do find that for some roles, such as accounting, men on average make more applications than women. So for some roles in this data set, we can see that um, gender may lead to an imbalance of data sparsity within the protected group. So this does imply that because of the behavioral differences in the way women and men approach job applications, there are cases where um, data sparsity can affect the quality of the recommendations given to women. So in our simulation, we can see that there are cases such as accounting where I've shown before, men generally apply to more jobs than women. So this creates an imbalance of data sparsity and that subsequently affects the precision of the recommendations shown to women. Um, in the charts I show here, we can see that for the roles where men apply to more jobs than women on average, the precision of um, the recommendations for men in these groups on average are slightly higher than the precision of the recommendations to, for women. Um, it is also important to note that the imbalance in data sparsity can also arise in other domains. Um, for example, in the e-commerce domain, there are survey findings that show that men and women have different shopping patterns and behaviors online versus offline. Um, an example in the medical domain is that like diseases such as heart disease can present differently in men versus women. So this may all lead to imbalanced data sparsity, which then um, can affect um, the, the, the models when we build them. So it is for us to try to identify the potential sources of bias and then to try to address them when we build our AI models. Um, so how can we mitigate uh, unfair bias emerging from imbalanced data sparsity? So one potential solution is to leverage hybrid recommenders to mitigate unfair biases. For example, at Seek, um, we can use we do use content-based recommenders to bring diversity into the recommendations. Um, it also helps mitigate the inadvertent biases in collaborative filtering algorithms. Uh, our content-based recommender uses content in the job ads as well as content in the candidate resume in order to surface jobs of interest to the candidate. In our content-based recommender, um, we have removed outliers. So these are people who have like applied too quickly or applied too frequently. Um, and this is done in order to remove potential biases. We also do not use PII data, such as gender, in the training of any of our models. 
Um, combining multiple methods of recommenders can help ameliorate biases in each recommender. For example, the content-based recommender may suffer from individual biases. So these are like biases in the content for a specific job ad or a specific candidate resume. But it might also be able to mitigate the biases in collaborative filtering algorithms due to data sparsity. Negative data sampling is another approach to mitigating biases. Um, so adding neg negative data sampling can potentially attenuate sparsity or imbalance as well as add valuable information to the recommender. Um, we can use oversampling or undersampling techniques. So, so we can reduce, we want to reduce the impact of people who are too active or even out the interactions of people who are less active. The target is to reduce sparsity and to balance sparsity considering different groups of individuals. Um, as we can see here in this chart, um, as we get more balanced data, like moving along the x-axis to the right, we do get higher precisions um, in our model. Um, finally, we also discussed the relevance of addressing feedback loop effects for the sake of responsible recommender systems. So in our specific example of bias introduced by data sparsity, we note that um, this bias is a reinforcing cycle. So the difference in the behaviors of men and women drives a difference in data sparsity, which then in turn drives a difference in the quality of the ads recommended um, to women versus men. And that then in turn again drives a difference in behavior. So it's a reinforcing loop. So it is really important for us to try and identify this feedback loop and try to break the loop in appropriate places. So this can be done via the methods we've discussed before, right? By um, improving the recommendation quality via hybrid recommenders or being more careful when we are selecting the data that we use to train the models. Um, it can also be done by trying to educate the users or changing environmental factors. For example, at SEEK, um, we do try to remove bias from the job ads by trying to like educate hires on how to write job ads that are welcoming to both men and women. And so um, we'd like to reiterate that it's really important for us to be responsible by intent. Um, AI has the potential to make this world a better place and we do need to play our part by identifying and addressing potential biases in our systems. Um, and that's, that's all I have. Thank you so much. As you all know, you can post questions and then I will pick some to ask directly. Um, there's one point that comes up several times, so I put it on here now. Uh, some people say it's surprising to find that women actually apply more to engineering jobs. Do you have any comments on, on, on that? What do you find from the data? Yes. Yeah, so that was also surprising to us. Um, but it's, um, and we did look at this quite closely. Um, it is not we did try and remove outliers and ensure that um, the statistics were right. Um, these are like, so we're saying that like individual women like seem to apply more in engineering, right? And this might be because like engineering is pretty, it's very historically male dominated. And so like, it seems to me like if you are a woman, you may need to work a bit harder and make more applications in order to like try and find a career in this, in this field. But this does require more like, you know, our research. So it's an open research topic. We would like to hear more from you guys as well. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, there's lots of questions pop in. Um, there's one question. Should we reward active users, um, the ones who watch more, uh, that's old stuff coming in. Um, <laughs> Um, what exactly does simulation data mean in this case, like in the way how you presented it in your work? Yeah, so we've used like, um, we've used like three months of like candidate behavioral data on our platform from like a, 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 from a specific period in time a couple of years ago. Um, and then we've used that data to like simulate a user item collaborative filtering algorithm and then try to identify, um, try to see if it's possible to see if there's a correlation between like data sparsities in protected groups and like a lack of like, and its impact on like, you know, um, the precision of the recommendation. Okay, thank you. And then another question, uh, could you please elaborate a bit more on, um, on the, on the downsampling technique and how it might contribute more to the data sparsity problem. Yeah, so 
I think the idea is that um, you can, the idea is to like not, to downsample like um, groups that are too active in order to make the groups that are less active to be more visible. And this should not, if you do this right, um, and if you do this well, we should not impact the, um, the accuracy of the recommendations for the group that's already really active. Okay, thank you. Let's Great. thank our speaker again.